Mr. Langford. Thank you, and thank you to all of you. You have done a tremendous amount of work and a tremendous amount of preparation, both for this hearing, but obviously for a lot of the reports and everything that you have done and the hours that you have spent for it. I want you to know we appreciate that very much uh, and what you have taken on the scope of it. My, my line of questions is just trying to gather a group of facts as we know it at this point, uh, again, to try to uh, zero in on some of the things you are trying to accomplish. What do we need to, to not have this repeat again uh, in the days ahead? Uh, would you agree we had an over-dependence on Libyan security that night and a security team that was local that was not sufficient for the task and that we had an over-dependence on them at that point? And anyone can answer that. Yes. Did, would, would you agree we did not have a sufficient number of our own armed security forces on the ground? We had a larger number before of DOD personnel that were there. They were obviously removed their, their, their task as it was done. They normalized, as I have heard several folks say, both Charlene Lamb and uh, Admiral Ken or Ambassador Kennedy say they wanted to normalize, that we did not have a sufficient number of armed security there that night. I believe the answer to that is yes, but your implication that, quote, DOD was anywhere around Benghazi at that time is a mistake. No, I am talking about prior to that. Were DOD personnel there in August? DOD personnel served a few uh, short periods in Benghazi, but their assignment was in Tripoli, their work was in Tripoli, and their majority was always in Tripoli. Did they travel with the ambassador when he went to uh, Benghazi, or would they have traveled with him? No. Okay, the testimony that we had received is that they would have, that they would have assigned took, some of those folks to travel with the ambassador. If the ambassador to took to Benghazi two Department of State security agents with him. Right, because they didn't have other folks that were there to be able to travel. Those 12 individuals had already left. I think it is really important. This is the SST. I think it is really important to, to focus on what the SST's mission was. Right. And over the period of time, and they were there for many, many months. Correct. But over that period of time, uh, the vast majority of their mission was training. They did Correct. take a couple of forays out to Benghazi. They did make some security recommendations. Uh, and, and from that perspective, they certainly provided some input with respect to security. But I, I, my own view is I think it is a reach to think that they would have been there that Okay. Let, fair enough. Did we have adequate diplomatic security there that night? The answer to that I already gave you no. Okay. Thank you for that. The facility, did it meet the minimum standards set, the Inman standards after the 98, the facility in Benghazi? No, certainly not. It didn't sure. meet any of the standards that were set for uh, Department of State posts. Do you know how many posts that we had worldwide at that time? Obviously, that has changed dramatically as it should. How many posts that we had worldwide at that time that didn't meet that minimum standard? I am only guessing, but somewhere between a third and up. A third of our posts did not meet the standards at that time? Yes. So 260 or so posts worldwide, you are saying a third of those didn't meet that standard that was set in 1999? That is my best understanding. Is there a certain could, could I just say, uh, Mr. Langford, sure. one of our principal recommendations was that the Inman Building Building Program recommended in the Nairobi Dar es Salaam ARB 10 years before had dwindled away and right. that it needed to go back to 10 a year at a cost beginning in 2015 of $2.2 billion a year. And that is in recognition that probably among those that don't meet standards, there are urgent, high-threat, high-risk posts, perhaps, that ought to get priority in that program. What, what about the high-risk posts? How many posts would you consider were at high-risk, high high-threat at that time? At the time of Benghazi, the Department of State with the Department of Defense had an emergency review of 19 posts, including visits to them, which I believe was their judgment about what was high-risk, high-threat at that time. Okay. Is there any special chain of authority to have actual personnel there or any differences in high risk, high threat? Who, who makes the decision putting personnel there and what the security is there? Yes, there is. And the decisions were made at the place that we identified. The Deputy Assistant Secretary in Diplomatic Security makes the primary decisions that her bosses are the people who oversee and review that activity. So that would be Charlene Lamb, Patrick yes. Kennedy. Would that go up to the Secretary of State's office? Will I have to sign off on that? No. And they don't go to the undersecretary for management unless there is a dispute, and then they do go to him for resolution. 
you, you had mentioned before as well, uh, that night, or Admiral Mullen actually had, that night there was no one on the ready uh, to be able to respond militarily. Correct. Um, w <laughs> did you discover if there was a contingency plan? Obviously, we are in a high-risk location. Um, uh, Libya is in civil war, or uh, just coming out of that. Did you see that there was a contingency plan for response in case there was a, an emergency? There, 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 I, I am not aware. I don't think there was one, and I am not aware if there was. Was that something that we should recommend in the well, days I ahead? Think I, it goes back to available assets and what are you going to focus on and what the priorities sure, are. Sure. I would, I would say you take high risk so, locations. Yeah, so there is a know, relatively small number that are high risk locations. Should well, those locations have a contingency? Well, 19 is not a small number when you start talking about forces. And so how are you going to make those decisions and distribute your forces? It is a worthy discussion. And I know the I know that the Pentagon and the administration has recalibrated that uh, as a result of Benghazi, but it is not an infinite resource, and so you can't get sure. it everywhere. And and if, I, if I could just add, Mr. Langford, the first line of defense is the local government. Right, which was the not sufficient. The second line of defense is our resources in place. Right, which And those are things enough. that we concentrated our attention on. As you know, the Department of State is assigned an additional number of Marines, an additional number of security officers. They have come to you for that support. I hope they get it. I believe that it is right. going ahead. Well, that, and that was our concern as well, is that obviously uh, the, the Libyan militia was not sufficient. We know that clearly now. We didn't have a, a, a high enough number of diplomatic security personnel. The facility uh, obviously did not meet the minimum standards. It was listed as a high-risk facility, and we seem to not have a contingency plan. The, the difficulty is it appears that the individuals that were there were very naked. Uh, and I, we understand our diplomatic personnel around the world uh, always take risks on it, but they seem to be particularly exposed in this particular location. The, the other thing, I, the only other thing I would add to that, and I, I mentioned this in my uh, closed uh, statement, uh, is that it was the deterioration of the numbers and the upgrades over time, over the course of that many months, that essentially did not prepare uh, that Benghazi compound from a deterrence standpoint. That it was very significant, and, and had we had two or three times the number of people in place that night from a security standpoint. I am not sure with a mob, a terrorist mob like that, that they could have done much. But what we also lost by watching the numbers deteriorate and not upgrading it, we lost any kind of deterrent capability so that the enemy would think twice about whether they do something like that. I thank the gentleman. The gentleman's time has expired, and I thank the